All right, so it's 7.30. I'm heading out for a pretty long ride. There's a huge hill in my city, so I'm gonna go and take that on. It's about seven kilometers at um, 8%, so that should be a good one. Never been there before, so yeah, should be fun. All right, just heading out to get my morning drink before heading onto the road. So whenever I'm out, I always buy this drink. It's called Pakari Sweat, it's like Gatorade, but whenever I don't drink this, I always get headaches on long rides, so it must have like salt or whatever in it, so it's pretty good. I would just pour it out of these big bottles into my normal bottles. All right, so this is my speed machine. What can you see that's very weird about it? Obviously, the first thing is that the front wheel and the rear wheel don't match. That's because the rear wheel is broken. It's made by a company called Nine Velo, but the rear one, the hub, just stopped working. It's not very good. It's broken on me twice, so there's going to be a full video on that at some point. So, yeah, not ideal. I recently changed my saddle and my seat post. So these are both made of carbon fiber now. Both very cheap, actually. This cost about £10. This was about £10 as well. So I'm just testing a hard saddle to see how it compares to my other one, which I ripped in the crash, so it doesn't look that nice. Yeah, it's not too bad. Running the real group set of people, which is Shimano Sora. I've got an 11 to 34 on the back at 9 speed. And at the front, I've got a Machine Power Meter crank set. It's um, 50 to 34, so that's pretty good. I've had this getting on a year now. Actually, maybe over a year. And so far, this has been really good. I would definitely recommend this. If you've got a Shimano bike and you want a cheap power meter, this is definitely a good option. It's quite a long ride to the base of the mountain, about 30 kilometers. First, I've got to navigate the residential area. It's pretty early, so all the kids are being dropped off at school. Next, we get onto the bigger roads. Some are in really bad condition and some are very smooth and brand new. I'm currently in the second week of my training plan. The aim is to get to four watts per kilogram. I'm following a plan on trainer road, but today I fancied a longer outdoor ride instead of the indoor intervals. So for today's ride, I'm going to try and make it a bit more difficult and then tomorrow I'll take a rest. I try to end each week with a TSS that is about where trainer road suggests. I live in a city called Shenzhen in China. The weather here is brutal. Even at 7am it's over 30 degrees. The worst part is the humidity. You just go outside and sweat straight away. It's really important to stay hydrated in this heat. 30 kilometers in and now we're just getting off the main roads and onto the quieter ones leading up to the mountain. All right, so we've got off the main road into like the country park sort of thing. And I'm just looking for a little shop to refill my water bottles. It's already, already about an hour and a half into the ride. Haven't gone very far. So we just stop, start, through all the traffic and stuff like that. So yeah, hopefully it should be good now. Hoping to find a shop. I've got two kilometers to the base of the hill, so there should be one nearby. So just refilled my water. Um, found a nice little shop here. And it's 9 a.m. Hoping to get to the top maybe by 10, 10.30. We'll see how difficult it is to find the base of the climb. So yeah, all right, this is it, final push. So that's where we're gonna get up today. That's Wutong Shan, about 600 meters tall. So I was following a route which I found on Strava and I thought it was going to be legit but it turned out this way was not allowed for bikes so the guard turned me down and said if I go back down to the bottom I can take a different road up. So I head back down to where I came from and try to find the main entrance. So I find the main entrance and as it turns out, the whole park is off limits to bikes, which is a real shame. So yeah, I was very annoyed at that. Right, so I got turned away from the biggest climb in the city. So maybe it's one of those things where you need to arrive really early before the guards are awake. So that's on the bucket list for later. These roads are really nice though, around this area. It's really pretty, really smooth, not many cars, pretty good. So many bike lanes here, it's really not that bad. But the thing is, when there isn't a bike lane, it's terrifying, so you know, can't have both, can you?
All right, just made it back. So obviously it was a bit disappointing that I couldn't do the big climb, but I still got in a good ride, three hours and 20 minutes. I'm about 70 kilometers, 600 meters of climbing. Because I took it so easy in the first half, I felt quite good there in the end. Obviously I'm very dehydrated, even though I drank like six bottles of water, but it's just the heat, it's about 34 degrees. So yeah, I think, um, Training outside is definitely important when you live somewhere like this because training inside is actually so much cooler than outside. Usually it's the opposite, that training outside is cooler than inside, but I guess I have a unique situation there. All right, so hopefully I'll be able to get to that climb at some point, maybe go really early in the morning when the guards aren't there, or there's some more climbs across the border in Hong Kong. So that's the plan as well. I'm definitely gonna go there at some point. There's a HC climb, which I will attempt someday. All right, that's it for this one. I will see you in the next video. Peace out.